We now go to our reporter, Laura Windsor, who has a segment on women who suffer from sexual dysfunction. Sexual dysfunction in women can result from a variety of medical conditions, as we hear from Dr. Leah Milheiser, who specializes in obstetrics and gynecology. She gives us the origins of female sexual medicine. The origins of female sexual medicine, the field itself, are very interesting. So we have to go back to 1998. And in 1998, Viagra came onto the market. At that time, no one knew what female sexual dysfunction was. All we knew is that men had this problem called erectile dysfunction, and there was a treatment for it. So all of a sudden, men, who were essentially the age-matched counterparts of their postmenopausal female partners, were suddenly having this renaissance in their sexuality, and they were having erections again. Now the problem was, there really wasn't anything for women, and women were experiencing a natural decline in sexual function. Their libido was going down, and they were experiencing vaginal dryness and pain. As a result of this, there suddenly was an explosion and interest in female sexual function. And one of the reasons was, is because if there was a biological cause of male sexual dysfunction, there had to be a biological cause in women as well. And so that led to, for the first 10 years of this century, just a huge amount of data on what the causes were and what the actual disorders are. So interestingly, men who have a sexual complaint in this, com in this country, it's actually quoted as being about 31% prevalence compared to 43% of women. However, there's seven drugs available for the treatment of erectile dysfunction in men, while there's only two available for the treatment of female sexual dysfunction in women. So there really is this disconnect between the number of women who have the disorder or sexual dysfunction and the treatment available. So female sexual dysfunction is comprised of several disorders. The first one are the desires, desire disorders. That's made up of hypoactive sexual desire disorder and sexual aversion disorder. Next is sexual arousal disorder. That could be arousal issues that starts in the mind, in the brain, or starting in the genitals. There's the pain disorders, which is made up of vaginismus and dyspareunia. And finally, there's female orgasmic disorder. So female sexual dysfunction can be caused by many things. So it can be a physical problem. So for example, if a woman has a chronic medical illness like diabetes, hypothyroidism, depression, it can be caused by a psychological issue. So increased stress, anxiety, depression, relationship issues is a big one, uh, self-esteem issues. It can be caused by uh, societal issues. It could be the religion that they were brought up in, what the mores and traditions are in their own culture. Dyspareunia, or painful intercourse, has many causes. One of the more common causes is something called vulvovaginal atrophy. This is something that affects postmenopausal women. It can affect anywhere from 25 to 50 percent of postmenopausal women not using treatment. Vulvovaginal atrophy causes painful intercourse because it causes the vagina to be dry and it causes the tissue to thin out. And what can happen is when a woman has intercourse, she experiences significant pain, she can experience bleeding. The vagina can actually get smaller in size as a result. So when we talk to women about treatment of vulvovaginal atrophy, we talk about various things. We talk about hormonal treatment and we talk about non-hormonal treatment. When we start off, we really want to focus on the non-hormonal options. So we talk about moisturizers, we talk about lubricants. A vaginal moisturizer is different from a lubricant, and I think sometimes patients get, get confused on this issue. A moisturizer is a maintenance therapy. It's meant to increase moisture uh, in the vagina. So it, it improves the moisture barrier, it improves the pH in the vagina. When you do those things, the vagina will be less dry and cause less discomfort. There are many options on the market for vaginal moisturizers. One that I frequently recommend to my patients is Replens because it does have data supporting its use, especially in breast cancer survivors whom their doctors don't want them to actually use estrogen therapy. Replens and other moisturizers work by increasing the moisture content and decreasing dyspareunia or painful intercourse. Another treatment that recently became FDA approved is Osfina, which is an oral pill. It's part of the CIRM family, and it has also been shown to decrease dyspareunia in postmenopausal women. Fortunately, most cases of sexual problems are treatable, so it's important to share your concerns with your partner and with your doctor. For the American Health Journal, I'm Laura Windsor.